Hi there, I'm Lindsay Sparks, author of fantasy and sci-fi romance books that almost always include mythology with my own special twist. Welcome to my weekly Author's Notes podcast. Today is Sunday, November 13th, and I would love to share some of my reflections from this past week with you. Um, announcements. So, uh, we did the cover reveal for the Raven Queen this week, LP and I, and that is available. There's a link in the show notes. Uh, you can also find it on my Instagram and Facebook. Uh, and so we're really excited to have that revealed. So, um, yeah. And then, uh, also coming up, um, let's see here. I think as, so this comes out on Monday, This episode comes out on Monday the 14th, so on the 15th is the mid-November Patreon drop, and that includes the next episode of The Nick Chronicles and the next episode of All World Online Looking Glass. So, uh, yeah, just letting you know about that. And then the current freebies or deals are the same as last week, so Legacy of the Lost and Fate of the Fallen. The audiobooks are on sale for 99 cents and 4.99 so you can get both for 6 bucks on Apple Chirp and Nook. And uh, also you can get uh, several of my audiobooks for free and a bunch of my ebooks for free as well uh, via my starter library which is available to newsletter subscribers. So no changes there, but in case you're new to this episode or new to me this episode, now you know. Um, my current works in progress, not a ton of changes here. So the Raven Queen is with the proofreader and darkness between the stars. Um, I, well, I guess there are changes. <laughs> so I've written 17 chapters of darkness between the stars. It is now 31 and a half thousand words long. And, uh, I'm really excited. We're getting, I think this week I'm going to, this week I'm going to reach the midpoint of the story. Uh, I should get past the midpoint of the story this week, but this week I'll at least reach the midpoint of the story which I'm really excited about and I feel like the first half of this book is really really angsty and then the second half of this book is really really dramatic and so I'm really excited like the first half of this book has been like really it's just like like, angsty is the best word it's like kind of depressing (laughs) like Tarset's going through some stuff (laughs) that happens there's something that happens early on in this book and Tarset's dealing with some some stuff and midpoint is kind of like when she figures it out and then like it gets kind of (laughs) crazy after the midpoint so I'm really excited about leading up to the midpoint the midpoint and then the stuff that happens next so It's been really fun, and I feel like it's just getting more fun. Um, And then I have something else that I'll talk about with Darkness Between the Stars in a minute. Um, But I am also writing tomorrow. Tomorrow I am writing All World Online Looking Glass Episode 3. So I already went over... um, I had written the Nick Chronicles Episode 5 already last month. Last month I released Episode 4. But I just wrote episode five right after I wrote episode four, just like because I didn't want to, I wanted to have less interruptions um, with Darkness Between the Stars. So it's like the same thing that I did with The Last Vampire Queen, episode eight, I want to say, that I wrote right after I wrote episode seven, just so I would have less things that would be stalling me for Darkness Between the Stars. And this is going to be interesting, like once I fully transition into writing everything serialized first before I really sit as books it's just like it'll be more of like a seamless rotation schedule but since I still have a couple projects well a couple series so the Fateless Trilogy and the Atlantis Legacy that were written traditionally that have pre-orders up already I have to stick to a schedule and so it just gets a little bit more stressful so I'm excited to move out of the stressful like writing to the pre-order schedule and more into writing them as serials Uh, which is going to be a big stress reliever for me, (laughs) but it's kind of an awkward, the next, like, mm, I want to say like five months, six months is going to be kind of like awkward juggling of that transition. So, um, if I haven't already talked about this on the podcast, which I feel like I have, it's no, there's no change in terms of like what readers who are used to getting my books the normal way through the, like the usual book retailers, 
Like, there's no change on that end. It's more just a change on the back end and my end and in the access that readers can get to me and my stories if they want to have access. If you if you want to have access to my stories before they're available on retailers, that is now a possibility. And that is through my Patreon. So I am transitioning, if I haven't already said this, transitioning to releasing everything first on Patreon in a serial format. So hopefully I can figure out a way to do this with the Fateless Trilogy book three. Um, And so we'll see if I end up doing a pre-order for that one or not. I'm really on the fence about it. Um, It would be amazing if the last pre-order that I did uh, was Atlantis Legacy book six. I mean, I would still do pre-orders for other books, but it would just be like, after I had the full manuscript written and I knew what was deal- what I was dealing with in terms of a timeline, much less stressful. So, um, yeah, that, <laughs> so there's that <laughs> a little behind the scenes look. Um, and let's see here. I'm also working on the Castle Corvo map for the Raven Queen, which I need to get done in the next couple weeks. So, uh, when we have the book, the manuscript back from our proofreader, and when LP formats it, she has the map to put in it because we want to get um, copies printed early so we can send them out to uh, advanced readers and in- uh, social media influencers. So uh, we're really excited about doing that, but it means like I need to like get this map done. So um, yeah, lots of fun project stuff. Uh, as always... <laughs> Um, right now I am actually reading something, which is so unusual for me during rough draft phase. Um, but we read Kingdom of the Wicked, uh, LP and I read Kingdom of the Wicked for the No Shelf Control podcast, and I loved it by Carrie Maniscalco. And so now I'm almost done with book two, Kingdom of the Cursed, and, um, it's just a very fun historical paranormal romance. Uh, the thing I, one of the things I think I really love about this is that it, there's no, it's demons, uh, and witches. Uh, so there's no elves, which is refreshing (laughs) because I feel like everything out there that's popular right now is elves, um, or not elves, sorry, fae. There's no fae. There's no fae. Like, how does that, it's amazing. (laughs) Um, so that's been very exciting. Uh, And then I also just finished reading, beta reading uh, Land of Fury for LP, uh, Lindsay Pogue. It's the third book in her Ruined Lands series, and I loved it. I think it was my favorite one in the whole series. So uh, definitely when that one comes out, I'm going to be recommending that to my readers because I know that you guys are going to love it. So what am I watching? Uh, I am, we are watching right now Peripheral still uh, as it releases. I love that show. I'm obsessed with it. (laughs) And then we just started last night and I think we might've watched like five episodes, but they're short episodes because it's just a comedy. Um, we're watching mythic quest (laughs) and it's so great and funny, (laughs) but it's about a video game company (laughs) and it's awesome. I love it. I recommend that. (laughs) Um, okay. My high this week was, oh, I was really excited about this. This was like a total shower light bulb moment, um, like a muse strike. Uh, I was in the shower and I figured out the, I had been uncertain. I, I knew one secondary POV I wanted to do for Darkness Between the Stars. This is like my series that has, the Echo World books tend to have another perspective in them. So there's like the main perspective. So in the first In the Echo Trilogy, it was Lex, but then there was also Cat in books two and three, was a very important secondary POV, especially in book three. Uh, And then in Cat's series, it was almost entirely Cat, but there were a couple of, there was another, there was like a Lex chapter, um, there were a couple other POVs in there. Uh, And then in Tarset's series... I've had a little bit of Lex and Cat. There was that one Nick chapter in Song of Scarabs and Fallen Stars. So in um, book two, Darkness Between the Stars, I knew one POV that I wanted to have, and that is to transition into the fourth series, which I'm I'm not unveiling yet. Um, 
although I feel like I have mentioned it somewhere, probably in a Facebook Live, I think. But um, so the, there's the POV that's preparing for the fourth series, which I'm really excited about. <laughs> and then there's another POV that I feel like fits with the previous series. So, um, and neither of those POVs are Cat or Lex. I'll just say that. So I don't want to announce it quite yet because it could always change, but I feel like my shower light bulb moment was like very clear and really helped me to like tie a bunch of stuff together in terms of telling what needs to be or showing what needs to be shown uh, in the present day timeline to help us all understand the Tarsat's ancient times timeline. So I was really excited about that. <laughs> um, my obsession this week or last week uh, was definitely like Tarset and Atum and their extremely tortured love story in the first half of Darkness Between the Stars. It's great. It's like really so angsty. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's really, really fun, but like depressing fun. But in the, it's depressing fun in the way, I don't even know if that makes any sense, but it's in the sense that like you know it's going to turn around. So I think that's why it's like the you know, it's going to get darker before it gets lighter or whatever it is that they say in the Wizard of Oz. Um, okay. I do have a fun research link to share with you. The link is in the show notes. It's about scurvy. <laughs> this, this book is getting really piratey. <laughs> just so you know, it's like, it, I mean, okay. So I feel like we got a teeny tiny hint of this at the end of Song of Scarabs and Fallen Stars, but Atum is not tied to any time period within his like bookended um, timeline. He has access to everything within like extra ancient time to like right up until, uh, well, to the nothingness uh, in the Echo Trilogy. Like, and that's the end of his reach of the timeline, which is why Tarsak can't get home because he can't, his timeline doesn't extend beyond then. So, <clears throat> he, for this, like, seafaring portion of the book, so now you know there's a seafaring portion of the book, um, yeah, it's just got, it's just gone full pirate. They're on, like, an odd ship, and it, it is, his clothing, Atum's clothing is fully inspired by, uh, black sails, um, it's, it's amazing, <laughs> Uh, but it's also really fun because he's pulled in, like, he's brought, like, modern stuff for Tarset. Like, she has an MP3 player that he brought with, like, a solar charger. <laughs> so it's really fun to play around with his access to other time periods. Um, and I've been able to pull in some other historical figures that have been really fun. So I'm excited about, like, oh there's just something so fun about time travel like not being it's it's like you get the historical element um like song of scarabs and fallen stars was fully historical fantasy essentially because tarset wasn't moving around in time other than that first jump but in this one <laughs> this one's gonna get a little bit crazy but in like a really fun way <laughs> um yeah so anyway this research uh, article or research link that I have in here is an article on scurvy and it was so interesting, super interesting. So if you have any curiosity about scurvy and that whole like seafaring issue, definitely give it a read. I just, yeah, it was really interesting. <laughs> um, okay. So my, how did I do with my goals last week? Well, uh, last week, my big goals were to write five chapters of Darkness Between the Stars. Uh, I think I wrote six chapters. Um, so that worked out really well. Uh, I wanted to do the Atlantis Legacy cover reveals. I think I did four of them. I still have two more that I need to do this week. Uh, and I had to stop because it was time to do the Raven Queen cover reveal, which we did on Friday. So... Uh, I did everything except for two of the Atlantis Legacy cover reveals. So that's a pretty good one for me. And then this week, I want to write five or more chapters of Darkness Between the Stars. We'll see if I do that because I won't be writing anything for Darkness Between the Stars on Monday. I'll only have Tuesday through Friday. 
um, because on Monday I need to write All World Online Looking Glass episode three. Hopefully I can get that all done in one day. Uh, and I have the mid-November Patreon drop on Tuesday, the 15th. So uh, I'm excited about all of that stuff. It's all super fun stuff and hopefully not too stressful. I think that I should be able to do the All World Online Looking Glass episode three thing just fine tomorrow. So we'll see. Um, yeah. So what am I looking forward to? The Patreon drop. I feel like I'm always looking forward to the Patreon drop because that that stuff is so fun, which is why I am so excited as I move towards everything being serialized first on Patreon and then coming out on the retailers. So, um, but yeah, so like I said, it's the Nick Chronicles episode five and all world online looking glass episode three, uh, which are so fun. Episode five, I feel like Nick Chronicles episode five, I just read through it this morning and made sure everything polished it up. Um, and it's very, very fun. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> it was great. Um, it, yeah, there's some fun stuff with Kat and Nick in this one. And as always, Nick's perspective reveals a lot more than, like, he's very, he's not like still waters run deep because he's not still waters, but he is extremely, there's a lot going on beneath his, like, surface that he uses to distract people from what's actually going on within him. So he is, I still think he's the most interesting character I've ever created. So I love writing his perspective because I learned so much about him and so much more about the story. And I feel like the story has become so much deeper just from writing his perspective for this. So that is it for me this week. I will be back next week to ramble some more. And until then, happy reading. (laughs) 